<laughs> Hi, great to meet you, Gwena. Great to meet you. How are you? Good. Thanks Good. for having me. Good. I'm um, excited to talk about your the, 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 the painting that you did that I saw in the in the tour guide. Wow, that's an amazing painting. So, tell us a little bit for people who don't who are not familiar with your art. I've seen your art. Um, you, you're 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 a um, you know a regular um, participant of SAC Open Studio. So I had the pleasure of seeing a lot of your art in the past. But tell us about um, you know your art and also the um, the painting that you submitted for this year's uh, Opus and Sack Open Studios. <laughs> well, I do original oil paintings, um, portraits, and my goal is to capture the spirit and personality of the animal, as each animal has its own unique character, just like a human portrait would. Absolutely. The humanity comes through in your portraits, in the you know you, the eyes and the kind of yeah, it's really uh, remarkable. So, um, this describe a typical day in your in your studio, or how what how do you work? How do you get a do you get a commission, or you are you um, you know you see an animal that you really like to paint, or what is your pro process to start a painting or to to work? <laughs> well, a typical day, I start out with coffee and yoga with my cat, Princess. Oh, there you go. Good. <laughs> and I like to do an hour of gesture drawing to warm up. That's been something I've started doing that it just really helps me to stay loose and sharp, but also um, not get too tight when I'm painting and not get too um, just into the details. Mm -hmm. And I'll paint for about three hours and then uh, my brain needs a break. So I'll take a break <laughs> and then paint for another few hours if I can. I have yeah. a commission to work on. Yeah, it's a full time. Do you first draw or do you do sketches or, or how, how, do, how do you start on a blank canvas? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. So I always start, I um, have some examples here with a little black and white just to get the composition. I'll just do a little black and white thumbnail. Oh, wow. So I'm just thinking about how I want to position it on the canvas. Um, and, this, and this is in paint, uh, with paint as well? What's so that? Your, your, your starting composition, it, that's paint, right? It's not charcoal or what? It's, it's paint. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of acrylic paint on a photocopy, so okay. I'm just working wow. out composition yes. yeah and then sometimes I'll do a little color study okay it's just like postcard size oh cool. yeah and work out the composition and then I'll transfer it when I have an idea of where I'm going I'll transfer it onto the canvas and enlarge it and I do an underpainting <laughs> my cat yeah yeah <laughs> First, I'll do an underpainting with uh, some transparent red oxide. Okay. And then I lay the color in and I like to work wet into wet because I love that a la prima fresh brush strokes. So um, mm. try to, if I can do it in a few sittings, that's my goal. Wow, really? Yeah. So like the, the how long, yeah, would it take you to you do a painting in a day or when everything works okay or it's a few sittings yeah yeah with the small paintings maybe in a day usually it takes a few days okay that's great and and the format you the paintings behind you they are all are kind of uh, the same form do you work bigger or this is kind of the format you work you like to work in or yeah i i like this size range yeah Okay, that's great. Um, so what keeps you motivated? Because it's you're a full time artist, right? This is your job. This is what you do. <laughs> what keeps you motivated to uh, what what does this job mean to you? What does the art mean to you? How, how what keeps you motivated? I guess is my question. <laughs> well, 
When I'm painting, I feel totally happy and alive. <laughs> and according to Freud, <laughs> there's two opposing drives that motivate human behavior. So we have Eros, the drive towards procreating, love, cooperation, and Thantos, which is the death drive, anger, fear. So painting enables me to embrace the creative drive and to be fully alive and also to channel the impulsive destructive drive into art. <laughs> so I think art has that transformative power. That's fantastic. It keeps you in balance. Keeps you in balance. Yeah, that's great. Um, also, I have another question here that um, from when you started painting or your schooling or your education, what, what influences or who influences your work or has influenced? <laughs> I've been influenced a lot from artists from the past, uh, especially France in the late 1700s, the Rococo era painting. Oh, yeah. So I love the so whimsical, indulgent, extravagant, the pastel colors. Yeah, and the way the way you paint, you 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 do paint like like an oil, like a more the classical style, but then your you know your subject matter could be completely something different. Or the animals, or I can see the shoe there. Um, but it has this kind of very classic feel the way you put down the paint and uh yeah it, it's uh, i can see how um the earlier 1700s you know that that's a, a big influence to the way you paint and the way you approach your art very nice so um another question i have is um other than um seeing your work online or um, on your website, is there, do you have shows uh, coming up or in the past or, or galleries or where can people see your art in person and, and if they would like, how could they purchase your art? Well, right now my focus has been on commissions. Okay. So if anyone's interested in a commission or work that's available, they can go to my website, missbree.com, and okay. there's more information about the process and it will answer questions. Okay, great. So missbree.com. We and it's it's in the I know it's on the tour guide and it's online, so that's a great resource. Um one other question I ask, um, I've asked uh, a lot of the artists is uh, you know, in this kind of strange time we're in right now, how are you handling this uh, pandemic in relationship with your art or how do you you know process it in your art or do are you working differently because of our pandemic um or you know it's actually benefited me in some ways i've had more time to go within and focus on what i want to focus on and um, get clear and I've been working on more commissions. So, you know, we're, we're artists, we're introverts, we're used to spending <laughs> long hours at home <laughs> with yeah. ourselves. So that hasn't changed a lot, but it has limited um, opportunities to be out in the art world and to show and that's been kind of a bummer. Yeah, that has been. It's, it's uh like you say, you know, artists, they do, you, you do have your own world and you focus on your art and, but it, it's already more and kind of an isolating um, kind of way of, of being. And then this pandemic um, is for a lot of people, it's more, is even more isolating, but also um, pushes you to go more within and, and to have actually more time to ponder or to do or, yeah, it's it's uh, interesting the way people deal with it. But like, you know, that's great that you can make, um, you know, take it, not take advantage of it, but you know, you, you work with it. That's awesome. 
So this is your, I know you've been in, on, on uh, many of the um, SAC Open Studio tours. So uh, how this year is completely different, of course, <laughs> other than us coming to you personally. How do you, uh, you know, how, how is this different? Or is this, uh, it's harder, it's easier. Um, you'd like to interaction with people coming to your studio. Of course we all do, but we have to deal with this. So how is this, how has this been different for you, this virtual open studios? <laughs> yeah, it's a strange <laughs> time we're living in. <laughs> It is uh, really strange. Yeah. Okay, do you have any... Um, see how it goes. <laughs> see how it goes. I know people are, you know, we're getting all very, uh, you know, technical, more adept. And, you know, we spend more, more time online. And um, mm -hmm. so uh, are, are you active on social, on social media or do you keep in contact already with 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 uh, clients or other artists online a lot or more now because we are virtual. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to embrace technology. We so have I'm to, on right? Instagram and Facebook. And streaming. <laughs> yeah. But also keep doing what's important, making art. I mean, we, we want to keep making art and sharing that with the world. And we're going to do that no matter what. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating and um, always, you know, sharing your art at SAC Open Studios and uh, we really appreciate it. And, um, uh, you know. I, I wanted to, um, sorry oh. to interrupt, Gwena. No, that's okay. I know since um, Bree still has a few more minutes, I, I had um, some questions I could chime in with. I was, um, of course, now it's like leaving my brain. Oh yeah. So one of the <laughs> With, with organizing SAC Open Studios all summer, um, one of the challenges I've noticed that artists are facing is selling, you know, they don't know how to sell their work um, yeah. in this pandemic. And I know you're one of the artists that I think I found you through um, social media. Um, so you have a social media presence and a website. Um, and I was just wondering if you have any tips for artists who maybe haven't sold online, if, if you have been and, and any tips that you have for them would be really helpful. Well, this is kind of counterproductive to what's <laughs> going on with the virtual life, but I would say making connections with people is the best um, thing you can do in that area. People who appreciate your art, that there's one-on-one -on -one friendships and connections and I really appreciate everyone who's supported my art. Do you think that you can make, Do you think you can make those connections online? I hope so. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. I feel like I personally I've met a bunch of new people online since this pandemic. Just like Same through here. Yeah. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. It's like we don't really have a choice now. We have to make these connections online if we want to stay involved in the art community. So um, I'm really hopeful that artists will still be able to continue selling work even, you know, even if we're not able to do it like fully in person. I can see, you know, making connections online and then making an appointment um, for someone to have a socially distant pickup. You know, I don't think that artists need um, an online store to sell online. I think they could just have an Instagram or a Facebook and make connections that way. Yeah, the one-on-one the -on -one may be even more important than, you know, being part of the store. So you can really, um, you know, customize it and, you know, just really get a little more um, information and back and forth. Yeah, I think it's really important to do the one-on-ones. Um, so Brie, I know your time is coming to an end. I can't remember if you, you told Gwena, but um, if you could just let people know how to contact you, maybe if they, they have a, a, loved, um, a loved animal friend, how they could contact you to, to get a commission. Yes, it's MissBrie.com. Awesome. Cool. And, and there's more information about commissions and um, you can actually get work directly from my website too. 
Very cool. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Bree. Very nice meeting you and thanks for participating. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Take Have care. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye, Bree.